Hi Tacoma, welcome to your second grade TV classroom. Today is Thursday, December 17th, and I hope that you're having a great day so far. Before we get started today, let's check in with our zones. How's your body feeling? How are your emotions feeling? How's your brain feeling? And share that with a learning buddy or someone near you in your home. Hmm, Gus, today I'm definitely in the blue zone. I'm having one of those days where I have a really bad headache and I'm not feeling great. But you know what's so awesome? Is that we can do hard things and I can still do my job and teach all these second grade friends. And even if they're having a hard day, they can do their job and do their learning. We are strong and we can overcome things. Isn't that so great? Isn't that so great second graders? I think it is. Well, before we get started, Go ahead and make sure you have these materials. You need your whiteboard and marker, a learning buddy, and your counters. All right? Okay. Hmm. It's What's Missing Thursday. What do we know? We know we have 57. Whoops, I need my pen. We know we have 57. Wrong color. Oh my. That's a part. Oh, we don't know this part, but we have a hole. So if I'm at 57, how many more do I need to get to 67? What was that pebble? Yeah, it's 10. That one was easy. What if I need to get to 87? How many more do I need? Hmm. In my head right now, I'm seeing the number line and I'm like 57, 67, 77, 87. How many is that? 30. Excellent. Oh. Hey. Wait a minute. If 57 plus 30 is 87, then what plus 30 is 77? Why do you say 47? Oh. Because 77 is 10 less than 87. So 47 is 10 less than 57. Great thinking. Now, what do I know? I have a hole, a part I don't know, and a part I do know. How are you going to solve this? Great, go ahead and solve it and see if you find the answer. I heard some people say, well, I'm on a number line. I'm starting at nine and jumping to 10 is one and 10 to 17 is seven and seven plus one is eight. 17 minus eight equals nine. Fantastic. Wait a minute. 17 minus eight equals nine. Something minus eight equals nine. Hmm. Can we use this problem to help us figure out the unknown in this problem? What is it? 17. Very good. Today, we are learning to solve word problems that involve money. We're going to continue working. Today, our money word problems are all about having counting different coins. So it's not just like five pennies or five nickels. Now it's different groups of different coins to find a total amount. So Mr. Kevin, we are going to need the whiteboard for this because I've modeled with coins. Not, not on this one, just the next one after this when we get to the actual lesson. So I want you to think about a hundreds chart. If you were starting at zero and you did 10 and you added another 10, where would you be? 20 and then one and one. What are you going to be at? 10 plus 10 is 20. One plus one is two. So our answer is 22. Okay. What if you're 10 plus 10? Where are you on the hundreds chart now? I'm at 10, I'm gonna jump another 10, I'm at 20, and then I'm gonna count by fives. 25, 30, so 10, 20, 
25, 30. Ah. If you didn't have a hundreds chart, you might say, well, five and five is 10. So 10, 20, 30, that would work too. Okay, here we go. 10, 20, 25, 30. And now I want to add one more. What do I do? 31, 32. Very good. That skill is going to help us today. All right, now I need my whiteboard, Mr. Kevin. I'm going to get a pen from in here. Ooh. And I didn't, Pebble, I didn't knock you over. I'm so happy about that. All right, so we've got our whiteboard. And this kid named Eric finds these on the floor. Okay, and this is how he finds them. And our job today is to figure out how many cents does Eric have? So what should we do? Moving coins. If you found it like this on the floor, how would you count it? What would you do? Would you say like one and then 10 and then five and then 10 and then five? And, or would that get really easy to make mistakes? Okay. What was that, Gus? First, you would sort them by like coin, okay? So penny, penny, dime, 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 nickel, nickel, okay? Now, how would you count them? You would start with the highest quantity first. Why would you do that? Okay, he says because it's easier for his brain to count the highest one and put them in order all the way down to the smallest one. So let's write what this equation would be. This dime is worth 10 plus 10 plus 10. Oh, is this looking familiar? Plus 10. See why we practice with that warm up? Plus 5 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals Solve. You have 30 seconds. Okay, there's a couple ways we can do this. Let's do it the first way by skip counting like we just did. 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52. Now to check my work, I'm gonna solve it a different way. I'm gonna say, I know that this right here is 40. I know that this right here is 10. And I know that this right here is two. And 40 plus 10 plus 2 is 52. Did you get 52 cents? It's important to put the cent sign because we're not talking about 52 chocolate chips. We're talking about money, right? Okay, so I'm going to reset this and let's look at some of the ways they solved this. And let's see if it matches what we did or if they find a different way to solve it. So Mr. Kevin's going to bring up our PowerPoint. Here we go, let's look at what they did. It says you can sort the coins and think about the value of each coin. Is that what we did? Yep, we sorted it and then we put the value of each coin. Okay, so we did that, that was great thinking. Oh, we didn't do this, they made a bar model. They put all the values in the bar model. 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, 1, 1. What do you notice about this bar model though? Yeah, the bars are different sizes. Pebble, do you know why they made the bars different sizes? Hmm, why do we think the bars are different sizes? 
Why is the 10 bigger than the 5 and the 5 bigger than the 1? Oh, because the value of the money is more. So the longer the bar, like this bar right here, let me get my highlighter. This bar right here is really long. And then this one is about half the length of this one, isn't it? And then this one is just like a little sliver because it's only worth one. Hmm, interesting. You can write an addition equation. Hey, that looks kind of like ours, except for they have one more nickel than we have. And one less dime. And one less dime. I must have grabbed the wrong one. That doesn't matter, though, because we did ours. So what was this combination? Let's see if you can figure it out. 10, 10, 10. Five, 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 one, one. What's the answer? Yeah. 30 plus 10 is 40 plus 5 is 45, 46, 47. All right. Good job. Ooh. It says, look at picture it, which is what we were looking at earlier. And count on by the value of each coin to find the total cents. Each time the coins change, be sure to change what you're counting by. So we're going to count up and actually write what we're counting. So 10, we're going to write what we're saying. So this, is, this does not represent the value of each of these coins. This represents what we're saying as we're counting. Does that make sense? So one dime does not equal 20 cents. We're saying the number that we're saying represents how many we've counted so far. So 10 cents, 20 cents. What comes next? Write it on your board. 30 cents, 35 cents, 40 cents, 45 cents, 46 cents, 47 cents. Okay. Eric uses the second model it. He adds values like this, fill in the sum. This kind of looks like that second way I did it when I had the brackets and I made the totals and then we added the totals up. So Eric says three tens is 30. Three fives is 15, and two ones is two. So 30 plus 15 plus two is 47. Why was it helpful to sort the coins to find their values? Why was that important? Tell your learning buddy, why was it important to sort the coins first? Mr. Kevin, can you take me back to the whiteboard? Yes. I'm going to make it match. Now imagine, friends, that we had to count it in order this way. Okay, so 10, 15, uh, 25, uh, 30, 31, 30, uh, 36, four, uh, 40. Was that very efficient? No. Versus this? 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47. Which way is less likely to make a mistake and which way is more efficient, which was faster. Definitely so, um, sorting them, right? So now, Asia has co the coins shown. How many cents does she have? Show your work. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna do it on my whiteboard. You're gonna do it on your whiteboard. And then Mr. Kevin's gonna show you my whiteboard when it's time, okay? So we're gonna give you about two minutes to get this solved, and then we'll look at each other's work and see what we think. Here we go, ready? Begin.
That's a long equation. Keep going. Mr. Kevin. Let's take a look, friends. So I'll move my whiteboard as I need to. But first, what I did was I drew the coins. Now, I'm not going to spend time to draw the faces on the coins. So I did their relative size and I put the first letter of their name. Quarter, quarter, dime, dime, nickel, nickel, penny, 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 penny. Then I wrote their values in order in an addition equation. And then I added up their values and got 85 cents. Then I checked my work by saying 25, 50, 60, 70, 75, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Did you get 85 cents just like I did? Does your work look somewhat like my work? Great job. We're going to skip this one for today. Steve has 12 cents. Then he finds these coins in his pocket. How many cents does Steve have now? All right, I'm gonna work right here on our PowerPoint. I'm gonna get my pen and make it white. So Steve has 12 cents. So let's put 12 cents up here in the corner. And we're gonna add that at the end. Does that sound okay? What do we see? What values do we see of coins up here? Ah, a quarter and a quarter. So that is 25 plus 25. Then do we see any dimes? Yep. How many dimes? One plus 10. Do we see any nickels? How many nickels do you see? Three nickels plus five plus five plus five. Any pennies? plus one, plus one. Okay, 25, 50, 60, 65, yep, 70, 75, 76, 77. So this equation is 77 cents. Am I done? I still have that 12 cents. So I'm gonna add 77 cents to 12 cents. And what do I get? 89 cents. So how many cents does Steve have now? 89 cents. Isn't that great? I love slowing down and breaking problems apart. It really helps us understand. Now, for your homework today, you're going to do page 257 and 258. We're working with coins and adding them up. Remember, if this is hard for you, that's okay. See if you can get some coins to work with at home and do the problems with the actual coins. That will really help. If you don't have coins at home, you could cut out little pieces of paper and make your own coins to use as you're adding. All right? Okay. Today, do we show our thinking? Yes. We didn't use, well, I used manipulatives, and you may have. We also drew pictures. Did we explain the strategy we were using? Yes. And did we show our thinking in numbers? Yes. So we were solving word problems that involve money. Now, make sure by the time your break is over, you have the materials you need for Miss Oslin. You need your ELA packet, your pencil, and your learning buddy. All right, second graders, it was great to work with you today, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.
One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get 10 points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, see how many points you can get. Good luck.
the heck are you? What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. No, you're not. Second graders, welcome back from your break. I'm just gonna get my timer going here so I don't take up all of your all of your day. There we go. I hope you had a moment to gather your materials that you will need for today. Literacy with Mrs. Oslin. Today we're gonna continue our study of letter writing. We are gonna learn how letter writers often write to their favorite authors to ask questions and share information. We are going to read a book today, and this is a book that I read when I was in elementary school called Dear Mr. Henshaw. It's by Beverly Cleary. It was illustrated by Paul O. Zielinski. And this is a book about a student who writes over the course of years to his favorite author, Mr. Henshaw, and he asks him questions and they kind of build a relationship. And I'm going to have you think today about who are your favorite authors and what could you say in a letter to them? And then I'm going to challenge you to begin a letter to your favorite author. Now, we're not going to read this whole book because it's pretty long. We're just going to read a couple of the beginning letters that our character writes to Mr. Henshaw. And there's going to be a lot of words on the screen. Don't worry about reading them. Just think about the words as I read them. Dear Mr. Henshaw by Beverly Cleary. May 12th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, my teacher read your book about the dog to our class. It was funny. We licked it. Your friend, Lee Botts. Boy. December 3rd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am the boy who wrote to you last year when I was in the second grade. Maybe you didn't get my letter. This year, I read the book I wrote to you about called Ways to Amuse a Dog. It is the first thick book with chapters that I have read. The boy's father said city dogs were bored, so Joe could not keep the dog unless he could think up seven ways to amuse it. I have a black dog. His name is Bandit. He is a nice dog. If you answer, I get to put your letter on the bulletin board. My teacher taught me a trick about friend. The I goes before E so that at the end it will spell end. We know that trick. Keep in touch, your friend, Lee, Lee, bots. Now, let's do some noticing. Let's go back to that first letter. May 12th. And then look at this letter. Are you noticing that there's a lot more words and details in this letter? Yeah, he's going from second grade to third grade. And as we grow as readers and writers, we can write longer and longer letters to our favorite authors. November 13th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am in the fourth grade now. I made a diorama of Ways to Amuse a Dog, the book I wrote to you about two times before. Now our teacher is making us write to authors for book week. I got your answer to my letter last year, but it was only printed. Please would you write to me in your own handwriting? I am a great enjoyer of your books. 
My favorite character in the book was Joe's dad because he didn't get mad when Joe amused his dog by playing a tape of a lady singing, and his dog sat and howled like he was singing too. Bandit does the same thing when he hears singing. Your best reader, Lee Bott. December 2nd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got to thinking about ways to amuse a dog. When Joe took his dog to the park and taught him to slide down the slide, wouldn't some grown-up come along and say he couldn't let his dog use the slide? Around here, grown-ups who are mostly real old with cats get mad if dogs aren't on leashes every minute. I hate living in a mobile home park. I saw your picture on the back of the book. When I grow up, I want to be a famous book writer with a beard like you. I am sending you my picture. It is last year's picture. My hair is no is my hair is longer now. With all the millions of kids in the US, how would you know who I am if I don't send you my picture? Your favorite reader, Lee Botts. Enclosure, picture of me. We are studying business letters. Now I'm noticing that as Lee is writing to Mr. Henshaw, at the beginning, his letters were really short and not including a lot of information. And now, not only is he expanding, which means telling more about what he's thinking and doing and telling about his life, he's also asking questions. So he's sharing information, but he's also asking for information back from Mr. Henshaw. That's what we can do as readers when we write to our favorite authors. October 2nd. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am in the fifth grade now. You might like to know that I have a book report on ways to amuse a dog. The class liked it. I got an A minus. The minus was because the teacher said I didn't stand on both feet. Sincerely, Lee Botts. November 7th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got your letter and did what you said. I read a different book by you. I read Moose on Toast. I liked it almost as much as Ways to Amuse a Dog. It was really funny the way the boy's mother tried to think up ways to cook the moose meat they had in the freezer. 1,000 pounds is a lot of moose. Moose burgers, moose stew, and moose meatloaf don't sound too bad. Maybe moose mincemeat pie would be okay because with all the raisins and junk, you wouldn't know you were eating moose. Creamed chipped moose on toast? Yuck. I don't think the boy's father should have shot the moose, but I guess there are plenty of moose up there in Alaska, and maybe they needed it for food. If my dad shot a moose, I would feed the tough parts to my dog, Bandit. Your number one fan, Lee Botts. I'm also noticing, thinking back to the features of letters, is that this letter has, all the letters have the date, they all start with the salutation, Dear Mr. Henshaw, and they end with a different line at the end. It said, Sincerely, your friend, your best reader, and now it says, Your number one fan, and then it's signed with Lee Bot's name every time. We learned that those are features of letters that are important to include. Now, let's go back. Do some thinking about what you noticed about all of these letters is there something that's the same something that's different was there anything that was changing take something time and then you're going to share with your learning buddy what you're thinking Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking about these letters being the same or different or how they've changed. Gus, I noticed that the letters, like I said, they got longer and longer. And I noticed that it was almost like Lee and Mr. Henshaw were having a conversation back and forth because Lee was asking questions. Mr. Henshaw was encouraging him to read different books, not just ways to amuse a dog. They really built a relationship. And I noticed that I could tell that Lee Botts, as he got older and was in school longer, his letters had more detail. They all had the date. They all had salutations. Um, and he started to make more deeper connections with the books and 
um, with between the family and the book. Now, we have this chart in our ELA packet, and it's our letter collections. And we added to it the purpose for the letters for some of the books that we've read. So we read I Want a New Room by Karen Kaufman Orloff. And we decided that the purpose of those letters was to persuade Alex wanted a new room and he was trying to talk his dad into giving him what he wanted. That's persuasive. The Day the Crayons Kit Quit by Drew Daywalt. We read that the letters that the crayons were writing were to tell um, Duncan, I was going to call him Declan, Duncan, the other character, how they felt. They weren't all happy happy. So that was the purpose of those letters. Now think about our book, Dear Mr. Henshaw. What was the purpose of the book? It's a young boy writes informal letters to an author. Why was he writing those letters? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you think the purpose of the letters in Dear Mr. Henshaw was. Gus, I think the purpose of Lee's letters to Mr. Henshaw were to share information, build and maintain a relationship, and just communicate with someone that he admired. Now, for your independent work today, you're going to continue to add to this graphic organizer the why. Why did Lee Botts write letters to Dear Mr. Henshaw in the book, Dear Mr. Henshaw? You're also going to list the features of the letters that we talked about, the date, the salutation, um, and that it was an informal, friendly letter because of how he signed the letters. Sincerely, your friend, your favorite reader, things like that. That's part of your independent work today. You're also going to use this document, Writing to Authors. And I want you to think about your favorite books and authors, why they are your favorite, and what questions would you ask the author? So let's take some think time and focus on what are your favorite books and authors? Turn and tell your learning buddy all about your favorite books and authors. Wow, second graders, you have a lot of favorite books. Now think about your favorite books and why are they your favorites? What do you like about them? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy why your favorite books are your favorite. What do you like about them? I heard some of you say that your favorite books make you laugh, that you learn from them, that you have connections with them, they make you feel things, lots of reasons to have favorite books. Now think about if you were to write to your fa the author of your favorite books, what would you want to know? For example, Lee wrote to Mr. Henshaw and was asking questions. What do you want to know about your favorite characters or the stories that your favorite author tells? Take some think time. Now turn and tell your learning buddy what you want to know from your favorite author.
you have so many questions. You're gonna use this graphic organizer to help you organize or keep your thinking straight. So when you go off to independently write, you're going to list your favorite books and authors. You're gonna write about why they are your favorite. And you're gonna write some of the questions that you have. We are learning that letter writers, that's you and I now, often write to their favorite authors to ask questions and share information. You could also think about the connections that you make with your books and think about what your favorite author might want to know about you as a reader and a writer. Make sure you use your powerful word patterns to help you when you're writing today. Find words that rhyme. Listen to the words that you want to write and think about what words you already know that rhyme with them. You can use the rhyming part to help you write new words. You're gonna continue to use your troublemaker words chart and use your tackle a word chart. If you notice that there's a word that's constantly giving you trouble, pick a strategy to help you tackle it so that you are becoming more of a grown-up reader and writer and you can read and write it in a snap. You're gonna to continue to practice reading a page in your snap words book using your read the word wall chart. You'll remember you can read it loud like a monster, scary like a witch, squeaky like a mouse, whisper like a secret, or Mr. Kevin has an idea, friendly like a frog. <gasps> I can't do that voice, but that was so much fun. You could read it friendly like a frog. If you invent your own and it's okay with you and it's okay with your adult, they can record you and send it to us here at TV Classroom and we will either play it if that's okay with you or we'll just share your idea with all the other second graders in Tacoma. If you're not comfortable being recorded, totally okay. Write it in an email or write it in a letter and Mr. Kevin will put up our address at the end and you can put it in the mail and we will share your idea. Now, a reminder, there is no school from Monday, December 21st, that's this coming Monday, until Friday, January 2nd. We will be back here in our TV classroom on Monday, January 4th. We have a special lesson tomorrow. Mrs. Wally and I are working together. We're gonna do something really fun and I'm gonna give you some ideas for what you can do during that break to keep your mind and your body and your soul in balance. Some other reminders, once we come back from winter break, we're gonna have continue with our special guest Wednesdays. Wednesday, January 6th, we have Simon and Quabi from the Peace Bus. We're so excited singing and telling stories and just learning all about peace and continuing to add to our social emotional work that we've been doing this year. Also, Wednesday, January 13th, Tawana Nobles, who is the president and CEO of the Tacoma Urban League, is going to be here talking about all that she does for the residents of Tacoma, especially in her new role as a Washington State Senator. Now, second graders, thank you so much for reading and thinking and writing with me today. I'm going to send you off to do your independent work, but before we do that, our affirmation is, I am kind. You are. Practice saying it aloud with me. I am kind. Please write to us and tell us all the kind things that you're doing for your friends and your family and your community. Have a great day and we will see you back here tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.